Greetings FFG fans and welcome to the five minute abridgment of this year's in-flight report. The Fantasy Flight Games in-flight report is an annual presentation to the public about the forthcoming year's products. It is usually given in person at Gen Con in the US on the evening before the convention starts. But during the pandemic they experimented with short live streams on multiple days. This year it was back on the stage and also live streamed on YouTube. It was hosted for the first time by Vice President of Strategy Jim Cartwright, who said there were a number of anniversaries this year which they were super excited about, but only mentioned specifically the five years of Marvel Champions, whose next expansion is themed around Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and that there will be weekly social media challenges, assuming they didn't blow all their savings on fancy motion graphics trailers. He did say they are ramping up on Marvel Champions and there would be more in the foreseeable future. Likewise with Twilight Imperium which had an announcement to announce they couldn't announce what they wanted to announce as it was too early to announce an announcement, but check back in 2025. Apparently it is something they've been working on for several years now. The bulk of this 45 minute presentation was taken up with Star Wars beginning with the deck building game, which they confirmed was originally a one off product but it performed so well it is now a full line and there would be much more to come in future. Although they only mentioned the already announced Clone Wars edition with a release date of 30th of August. Then it was on to the Star Wars Unlimited TCG which he described as a resounding success, well beyond anything our studio has ever seen. He confirmed there would be a set one reprint later this year. And November 8th is the release date of Twilight of the Republic. There were some spoiler images you may or may not have seen including the new keywords coordinate and exploit. They also finally revealed the names of the next three expansions, finally. Next they brought out the head of the Game Genic Studio, Adrian Alonso, who said there would be new Star Wars products for every set, as well as evergreen products including the deck pod and the original single and dual player playmats with play zones, as well as the deck sleeves based around lightsaber colours. He said the tokens would be back in stock soon, but not how soon. He even revealed the translation of the Orbe script on them. As far as new sleeves go, they are adding two new lightsaber colours, white and dark saber black. Two new leaders, Ahsoka and General Grievous, as well as Obi-Wan and Darth Maul. These will be available from November 30th for a limited period. How limited, naturally, he would not say. They come in packs of 60 sleeves, plus a bonus clear sleeve for your double sided leader card. Speaking of Ahsoka and Grievous, they will appear on their soft crate designs along with Obi-Wan and Darth Maul. Also in November will be four new single player playmats. Three of them will be full art because who doesn't want a Yoda mat regardless of which Star Wars game you play. And also one with play zones. He promised more products in the future. Clearly we are saving the best till last. That's right, Arkham Horror got a mention, but as you can see by the background, only the card game got any love. Love which was padded out by already announced or available products. They declared Hemlock Vale was a fan favourite, but gave no kind of metric as to how they reached this conclusion. They reminded you that the Innsmouth Conspiracy was the last of the repackaged cycles, which surely means there will be even less Arkham products released each year. And Midwinter Gala, which we thought would be available at Gen Con, at least to those that booked in to play it, but according to a Reddit post it wasn't, which means we don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on an eBay copy. Woohoo! Come to think of it, in the live stream playthrough last week they specifically said people at Gen Con would be the first people to get their eyes on the scenario, as opposed to hands, or wallets. Hopefully it will be released in stores later this month. But he didn't need to waffle, or do cringy pantomime gags frankly, or even spend more thousands of dollars on motion graphics trailers. All he had to say was Cthulhu is coming. The next campaign expansion the Drowned City will be available in early 2025 and feature old tentacle face himself. There were no details given and you can squint at the blurry images and draw your own conclusions about who the investigators are and how many. But he did say the city of Arkham will be forever changed after we go through this experience. And this is just a huge milestone for us as we take Arkham Horror the city into a new direction, into a new place, and I promise you when the campaign is over, Arkham will never truly be the same. Well that's not going to cause rampant speculation on social media or anything now is it? 
Thankfully, he did address the misconception that the appearance of Cthulhu would mark the end of the line for the card game. This is not the case. In fact, he went on to give a number of statements about the game. This is another game where we have actually also increased the number of people on. Arkham Horror is one of most successful lines, and some of our most popular content is this game. This game is going to continue also for the foreseeable future. We've added additional designers. And that's your lot. No mention of any new Descent, any more Outer Rim expansions, or even the Mandalorian game which we saw at UK Games Expo.